Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. Today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Ball Lightning Hierophant. I'm doing pretty well in SSF, so we're currently up to one death at the moment. Although, this one death would have been alleviated by our new swap. So if you guys remember yesterday when I was talking about it, you can kind of see what the skill tree looks like. And now I am kind of working in my next defensive layer. So at the moment we have like a 3.6k life pool with a 2.3k ES pool and a really big mana pool which works out very well with Mind Over Matter, especially with Hierophant because we get 50% Mind Over Matter here. So at the moment we have a very big effective life pool, but we don't really have much mitigation. So to help with this, um, we have taken basically Anointed Flesh over here. Anointed Flesh paired with the Illuminated Devotion Ascendancy essentially make, uh, makes us not really affected by Chill or Shock. Um, I am slightly affected by Chill, but when we finish our Pantheon, we won't have to worry about that. So that helps mitigating Shock. And then down here, we are now working on doing Suppression. I currently have virtually no Suppression, but these next couple of nodes will be massive. So Mage Bane is going to be a little bit over 10%. Then we get Reflexes here, which is really big, because if you guys remember before, I have dropped Purity of Elements now for Grace, and I'm running a Jade Flask. I don't have that much Evasion yet, but these nodes will help a ton with Evasion scaling, along with getting the Evasion Mastery, which is not for Evasion, but for Suppression. So right now, we're working on the next defensive layer into the build, which is Spell Suppression. You'll remember before I had a unique ring equipped, and that ring was giving me Life Leech. One of the nice things about Illuminated Devotion here is it also provides a source of Life Leech, so I don't have to hunt for a Cluster Jewel or sacrifice a ring. Now, there is a topic to be uh, said about Conviction of Power, but I personally am a big fan of Illuminated Devotion in this setup. So with that being said, I'm going to go jump into a red map for you guys. I haven't cleared red maps yet. We are pretty much filling out the atlas of our uh, yellow and white maps just because we're kind of just going at our own pace. Here's a T11. It's got uh, more magic monsters, nothing crazy there. The only thing that's bad is the less AoE, but it's not like a big deal. But less AoE does hurt ball lightning. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. So as for our links right now, we're currently running Slower Projectile, Ball Lightning, Archmage, Inspiration, Pinpoint. I'm not sure when I drop Pinpoint. Maybe when I get Cast Speed Rings, we'll consider dropping it. So this is definitely a, a big thing. As for how I got my 5 link, um, the League Mechanic often drops things that says like minimum of 5 linked sockets or whatever. So pretty much that's what we used. We used 4 4 links and then 1 5 link and that guaranteed our 5 link. The damage on this build is absolutely unethical. I'm not even doing the, what is it, the Ice Nova variant, which is supposedly way higher damage. And this is already kind of crazy. I think some of the future things I'm going to want to go ahead and do is incorporate a Corrupted Soul Timeless Jewel. The Corrupted Soul Timeless Jewel is going to help us split part of our energy shield into our life pool. So what I mean by that is Corrupted Soul is a node that gives us 15, 10 or 15 percent of our life added as energy shield. It's basically more efficient than taking any energy shield nodes on the tree, while also making it so that 50% of damage we take to our energy shield pool hits our life pool. And the reason this will work out very well is because 50% of the damage to the life pool goes to the MP pool. So it all kind of syncs up very well together. This will help us stagger damage since it's right now, energy shield gets depleted, then life and mana go down, but I want to keep this buffer of energy shield as a nice defensive layer. All right, here is our boss. Let's see what we got. He's right over here. See you later, friend. Grab that contract. I think spell suppression will make this build feel amazing when I'm doing boss progression. I'm very excited for spell suppression. Uh, we're also starting to get our physical damage taken as X element. This is part of what makes Betrayal so strong. So I actually already got it on the body armor, you can see. And once I get a new helmet, I will craft Fizz Taken as Fire on the helmet as well. Although I have a life roll on there, it's probably better realistically to craft physical damage as fire right now, but I'm just going to wait for a new helmet. I think also due to popular requests, I might uh, upload a T17 clear on my RF Chieftain. 
A lot of people are asking for like a map regex for T17, but it's very difficult for me to make one because I think it's more important to explain what modifiers do rather than just making a regex that's like three pages long. <laughs> so I think what I'll probably do is uh, record a T17 clear and show myself rolling like five maps and then people can understand why I choose to not run certain maps. One other really nice thing that I have done with this setup is I actually put Ellie Prolif, if you look, on my Frost Blink. So I have a Frost Blink of Wintery Blast. And the Frost Blink of Wintery Blast, I think I was supposed to be walking with that. I just kind of woke up and forgot. It basically has Ellie Prolif on it. So there's a very good chance that I just freeze the pack that I jump into. Uh, the freezing the pack actually makes for such a clean playstyle. I basically use the Frost Blink of Wintery Blast as my, like my shield charge. And then I use regular Frost Blink as my immediate escape. So it looks like this, right? Because you can technically get stunned out of your, you know, your cast time, but you're not going to get stunned out of an insta cast. So that's what's pretty nice about it. Anyway, that's pretty much the character update. I'll go ahead and kind of show the rest of my gear if you guys kind of want to see. So basically, this wand was crafted with the league mechanic. I just put in a whole bunch of lightning and mana mods and clicked go, and we got pretty lucky. Uh, this one we just ID'd off the floor. Helmet ID'd. This one was crafted with the League mechanic and then just scoured it and recrafted. Uh, pretty nice ring. Other nice ring, primarily just for Frenzy Charges. Definitely need to replace it. Uh, really high cast speed amulet. Some boots we just randomly ID'd. Same thing with our gloves and our belt. And as for our passive tree, we are now working on going Reflexes, Mage Bane, and Suppression over here. That's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. One last thing before I go is my League Start Atlas, because people have been asking. Right now, it's pretty much just bare bone every single map node on the tree, so that hits all four of these for easier progression. It's probably overkill. But remember, we have multiple Atlas tree templates, so that's what my first one is. I'm at the point now where I have all my Kirak missions, because I'm using Kirak for map sustain. So what I'm thinking of doing now is actually moving into a league mechanic of my choice. I am getting a little bored of Betrayal, so I'm probably going to drop Betrayal once I get the rest of my unveils. And then I think I'm going to be moving into either A, Expedition, or B, Harvest. Expedition is probably ideal, but Expedition makes the Death Rack counter go up. Uh, so well, I'll see if that's actually what I want to do. Anyway, catch you guys all later. Thanks for watching.